Hey, what's up Airsofters? Beardsoft here. I've got another unboxing for you from Evike. This is the $150 open box mystery item from the Evike Boneyard section. I bought this box about three weeks ago. It was a little slow due to the holiday season to get here. Um, this box weighs 11 pounds. So I thought I'd close out the 2020 year with an unboxing video. Starting in 2021, I should have some new content for you guys. I still have some gameplay footage to go through from the fall. Um, I'll be still playing throughout the winter. Uh, weather permitting, I'll bring my cameras out to get some more gameplay footage. Starting in March and April, the Airsoft season should be in full swing again. I've got the Red Dawn event with Mirror Tactical in March, and then Operation Freedom 2 at Black Ops Bristol in April. So yeah, with that, let's start digging into this box. It's a pretty long box. Like I said, it weighs about 11 pounds. The last few comments on the open box page have been a lot of APS Phantom Extremist guns, uh, different variants. If you've watched 6mm Badger's videos, you'll see that he got a few APS guns as well. Um, that's kind of what I'm expecting here. Um, I'm assuming Evike probably ran out of open box items and started digging into their kind of old stock of APS guns. So let's get this box open. Today I have for you a DeWalt oscillating saw. Um, I am a professional. Do not try this at home. Just slices through the tape like butter. This is one of my favorite. Hopefully I don't cut through the gun box. So yeah, this thing just cuts through things like butter. That's pretty awesome. Uh, so let's dig into this box. We've got the Evike paper on top. Looks like we have a black box in here. I can't tell what it is. I'll let you guys see it first. Oh uh, wow, could be an H and K by this red stripe. Nope, had it upside down. It's an APS gun. So let's open this box up. It's a pretty high quality box. It feels pretty good. It is an APS Phantom Extremist box. You can see the logo right there. Um, we've got the nice black styrofoam inside. Wow, so we've got a nice Evike OD green patch. I like that, I'll use that. And we've got an Evike sticker. And then we've got this beautiful, beautiful looking gun. Wow. Let's pull this out for you. Look at the camo pattern on that. That is just awesome. Um, this looks like some form of Atex. I'm not sure which one. Uh, looks like mostly tan in color. Uh, so we've got the gun there. We've got the unjamming rod. We've got a color matched Atex magazine here. Uh, pretty, really nice paint job on this. Uh, the magazine feels a little cheap. I probably won't use this, but it's very cool. It's a very cool looking magazine. And that looks like we also have some sort of rail covers. I'm not sure where these would go. They're kind of two different sizes. And then we just have the scan here for the owner's manual. Here, let's get this box out of the way. I think that's I think that's everything inside this box. I don't see anything else hiding in here. Put that to the side. So let's take a look at which model this actually is. Um, it's the Phantom Extremist Mark II, and the color is ATEC AU, which is ATEC Arid. Um, I probably forgot to explain this was a $150 mystery box. It's supposed to be an open box item. But this thing looks like it's brand new, never been touched. Um, it's still had all the packing materials. It really looks like they just opened the box to put the patch in, honestly. So let's take a closer look at this gun for you. It's full metal body, so full metal front rail system, key mod on the side. Um, for a key mod system, it's 
very slim, feels really nice. It's easy to index. It's very solidly constructed. You know, there's barely any wobble between the upper and lower receiver here. Um, we've got a nice stock here. I really like the look of that. I might put it on a different gun, honestly. Um, got a really nice metal flash hider up here with an orange tip. It's got this nice chrome accent piece. Really nice paint job on this receiver. You can see they went the extra mile and even painted on the T-marks on the top rail after they painted the gun. Uh, flip up front and rear sights. We have some sort of skull pattern. I don't know if you can see that there. There's a skull pattern on the front and rear sights. Uh, let's see. Same pattern is here on the upper receiver. Looks like we have full ambidextrous controls. So we've got a mag release there. We have a mag release on this side. We also have the ambidextrous fire selector. Uh, so the first one looks like it says pain. Second one says kill. Fully ambidextrous on both sides. Very easy, very snappy to use. You know, it's got a solid lock there on semi. I wouldn't be worried about that flipping into full auto. We've got the charging handle up top. Not sure if this has a functional bolt catch. Oh, yeah, it does. So we have a functional bolt catch on this side. As you can see, you do have to manually set it though, so you pull it back, set it. Um, inside, we just have a dial style hop up, not my favorite. I would prefer a rotary hop up for that. This is electric blowback, so what happens is this mock bolt is kind of locked into the back of the piston, and so when the piston moves back and forth, it moves that bolt back and forth. Looking at the stock, we have this nice buffer tube stock, um, really smooth functioning. Uh, let's see, let's pull this pin out here. So you have a metal pin that holds the battery compartment in place. Flips down. Looks like we have small Tamiya type connectors, a fuse. Uh, let's see how much space we have in here. Looks like a tight fit for a battery. I think I could fit something in there. Um, so let me go find a battery. I'll be right back. So I tried fitting one of these 7.4 volt LiPos that I use in the stock. It doesn't quite fit. Um, it's a very slim buffer tube style stock. Um, this does have a micro switch trigger, and when I pull the trigger, you'll be able to see this mock bolt move back and forth. So here's Semi. And here's Full Auto. You can see a little bit of that kickback as I pull the trigger. Yeah, so overall, very snappy trigger response with that micro switch trigger. That electric blowback action is pretty cool. I think if I were to actually use this on the field, I might disable that electric blowback. So what it is, there's two tabs that kind of follow the piston. And if you either take those tabs off or buy a new bolt that doesn't have those tabs, you can disable that feature. Let's see how it looks with a mag in it. Um, it is kind of a tight fit with a stock mag. It doesn't seem like it really matches up well. Let's see, it just pulls out. Uh, let's grab another mag, see if it fits okay. So I grabbed two more mags to try out. The first is the KWA. Kind of a tight fit, but it does lock in there pretty good. Yeah, very tight fit, I can barely get that out. Second is a PTS. Yeah, that fits beautifully. No problems with that at all. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not a big fan of these dial style hop-ups. Um, probably one of the first things I'll upgrade on this gun is this hop-up. I'll probably put in a spare rotary hop-up from another gun. Um, so what I'm going to do next is take out this front receiver pin and see what this hop-up and barrel looks like on the inside.
All right, so I've got the top and lower receiver apart. Just slides apart like that. Pull out the barrel. Uh, well, it's a nice stainless steel bar barrel. It's got some good weight to it. We've got a metal dial style hop up adjustment. Uh, let's see, what kind of rubber we have in here. Kind of just a standard hop rubber. Actually, it adjusts pretty good. It's not bad. See, the barrel's got a very nice polish on the inside. I don't know what the inner diameter is. I assume it's a type bore because this is a pretty nice quality barrel. And then here on the gearbox, you can see how that mock bolt slides back and forth. Um, you can see these two slots. As the piston travels back, it grabs onto this mock bolt and pulls it back as well. So if you ever want to disable this feature, you can buy a new mock bolt cover on eVike that doesn't have these two tabs on it, and that'll disable the electric blowback feature and probably lead to less wear and tear on your internals. So that about does it for this video. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with this item. Um, it's a really solid feeling gun. I think it'll be a lot of fun on the field. You know, it, it feels really nice. Um, I'd say the only negative about it is the dial style hop up on the inside. Um, so I paid $150 for this on eBike. It was an open box mystery item in the boneyard section. And I just looked up the price for this and I'm, I'm kind of in sticker shock right now. This gun, brand new on eVike, which is the APS Phantom Extremist Mark II in ATAC Arid. This gun, brand new, is $345. So once again, I got an amazing deal on eVike with their mystery items. I just cannot believe the value for money I got out of this. If you like this video and want to see more like it, hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. You can also check out one of my other videos to the side here. Happy New Year and stay safe everybody.